Hey, it's Horner. We're going to look at the problems for sections 16.1 through 16.3. This is problem number one. It says find the total positive charge of all the protons in one mole of water. So water we know is H2O, and if you look on the periodic table, hydrogen has one proton, so there's two hydrogen here, so that's two protons, plus oxygen, the uh, atomic number for oxygen is six, so it has six protons, so we have a total of 10 positive charges here for those 10 protons. Uh, let's go ahead and take that 10 charges times one mole of water. We know that for every, uh, there are 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd moles of water per molecule. Uh, and then we also know that our charge here on the proton is 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19th. If you go ahead and do that math, you should end up with 9.6 times 10 to the fifth coulombs. So things that you uh, might need to remember from chemistry is this is Avogadro's number. That's the number of molecules or number of anything in a mole. Uh, and then how to find out how many protons are in water. So that is the end of number one. Let's go ahead and take a look at the next one, which is number four. Number four, we have a sphere. It has a charge of four nanocoulombs, so this thing is four. We have a negatively charged rod. It has a charge of negative six. Uh, when the rod touches the sphere, we have electrons transferred from one to the other. So these are our electrons. So we're going to add electrons here, and we're going to subtract electrons from the rod. Let's start with a sphere. So here we have the sphere. Uh, we're going to say that the charge on the sphere is equal to what first starts at 4 times 10 to the negative 9th coulombs. We're going to add to that uh, our 8.2 times 10 to the 9th electrons, and the charge on each one of those electrons is negative 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs. Uh, if we go through and do that math, we should end up with 2.7 times 10 to the negative 9th coulomb. So we obviously dropped in charge because uh, we did transfer those electrons over. So we're going to be less positive than we were before. For the rod, we can say this is Q for the rod, Q for R. Uh, we started with negative 6 times 10 to the negative 9th coulombs. And we're going to, now remember, we got rid of electrons, so that is minus, and then this is 8.2 times 10 to the ninth electrons, and each electron has a charge of negative 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs. Uh, when we're done, we're going to see that now, instead of a negative 6 nanocoulomb, it should be less negative, so it's going to be negative 4.7 times 10 to the negative ninth coulombs. And that is the solution for number 4. Let's go ahead and take a look at number 10. Number 10 says if the electric force of repulsion between two 1 coulomb charges is 10, neut 10 uh, newtons, how far apart are they? Uh, this is a Coulomb's Law problem, so we're going to use Coulomb's Law. F is equal to K times the absolute value of Q1 times the absolute value of Q2. So that's what those are. Um, all divided by the distance between them squared. Uh, let's go ahead and solve this for r. So r is going to be equal to the square root of k times q1 times q2 all over the force. And so now that's equal to the square root of 9 times 10 to the 9th. That's our value for k. And then each one of these charges is 1 coulomb, so we're just going to say this is 1 coulomb squared. And we're going to divide that by uh, the force, and the force between the two was 10 newtons. So uh, at this point, if you plug everything into your calculator, you should end up with 30 kilometers, or 30,000 meters is probably what you're going to end up with first. For number 11... It's our next problem. Now we have something very similar. We have two small uh, metal spheres. 
they're 25 centimeters apart. So watch out there. Uh, the spheres have an equal amount of negative charge and repel each other with a force of 0.036 newtons. Now we're going to look for charge. So we're going to use our same equation again. We're going to start with Coulomb's law. So force is equal to K times Q1 times Q2 all over R squared. But we know that these Qs are the same. So now our equation becomes F is equal to K Q squared all over R squared. And we can rearrange this equation so that we solve for Q. So Q is equal to the square root of the force times the radius squared all over k. So let's plug everything in. Uh, our force we know is um, 0.036 is what we had. So there's that 0.036 newtons. The distance between them, remember 25 centimeters would be 0.25 meters. We need to square that number. And then we're going to divide by our constant k, which is 9 times 10 to the ninth. If you go ahead and work all that math through, we end up with 5 times 10 to the negative 7th coulombs. Uh, but if we notice, they have negative charge. So here we need to make sure we make our final answer negative 5 times 10 to the negative 7th coulombs. And that is number 11. Let's go on to the next one which is number 17. We have two point charges separated by a distance r and we'll repel each other with a force f. If their separation is reduced to 0.25 times the original value, so they're getting closer together, they want to know what is the magnitude of the force of repulsion between them. So um, because they repel each other, we know that they've got to have the same charge. Let's go ahead and take a look at Coulomb's Law. We know that these two charges are the same, so we're going to say K times Q squared, Q squared because they are the same charge, divided by R. The new magnitude, if we move them to a position where they are 0.25 times the original value, that doesn't change anything on the top. K, Q squared stays the same, but down on the bottom we have 0.25 times r, and then that whole thing is squared. So this would be equal to, if I take 1 divided by 0.25 squared, I should end up with 16 times k times q squared all over r squared, and k q squared over r squared, remember we said was f, so that would be 16 times the force. Just a ratio problem, just proportion. For number 18, uh, this one says I have a potassium and a chlorine ion. So this is a chemistry or biology related problem. Uh, and they are directly across from each other on opposite sides of a cell membrane. That cell membrane is 9 nanometers thick. So remember that's 9 times 10 to the negative 9th meters. They want to know what is the electric force on the potassium ion due to that chlorine ion. Uh, so let's go ahead and find the electric force on the uh, potassium ion. Let's go ahead and start here. So we have the force is equal to, uh, now uh, this is an attractive force. We're going to say that this is equal to uh, negative K times Q1 times Q2. And remember these are absolute values all over r squared. And so this would be equal to 9, sorry, negative 9 times 10 to the 9th. And then we're going to multiply that times uh, the charge. So here, uh, potassium uh, ion is plus 1, chlorine ion is negative 1. And so we're going to use uh, just a single charge, 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19th, and we're going to square it. So that's the charge for each one. Since this one has a positive charge, this one has a negative charge, but we're doing absolute value, we can just do it this way. And then we're going to divide that by our um, distance between the two, which we said was 9 times 10 to the negative 9th, and we're going to square it. And so we get an answer here of negative 2.8 times 10 to the negative 12th, uh, newtons. So the force overall here should be equal to 2.8 times 10 to the negative 12th newtons and it would be toward the chlorine 
ion and that forces towards the chlorine ion uh, because the chlorine ion is negative and uh, that's where the force is uh, going to. For number 19, I'm sorry, number 20, we have three point charges here and they're fixed in space in a right triangle. They want to know what is the electric force on this charge due to the other two charges. So to start this one, we know that this charge is attracted to both charges. So we know that this one is attracted this way, this one is attracted uh, by the other positive charge to the right, and so between the two charges we should have some sort of um, electric force that kind of goes in between the two. This one's a little bit bigger than uh, this one is, so this line is probably a little bit closer to that bottom charge. So to do this, let's go ahead and uh, start by looking at all of the forces in the y direction. So we've got to have all of the forces in the y direction. So the force in the y direction is equal to uh, k. And so here we're going to do k is 9 times 10 to the 9th times our first charge, which is 0.8 times 10 to the negative 6th. And then um, we also need to multiply that by the charge that we have down here, which is 0.6 times 10 to the negative sixth. And then we're going to divide that by the distance between the two, which is 0.08 meters, and we square it. So because these are the only two, uh, this is the only force in the y direction, we can just use uh, Coulomb's law to solve for this one. If you do that, you end up with 0.67 newtons. Now, the force is in the x direction. Uh, it's only between these two, so that makes this problem a lot easier. So the force in the x direction here is equal to 9 times 10 to the 9th times 1 times 10 to the um, negative 6th. So that would be this charge times 0.6 times 10 to the negative 6th and the distance between the two uh, is what we need to figure out and that's going to be the square root of 0 0.1 oops, 0 0.1 squared minus 0 0.08 squared. So we know this side and we know this side. This side would be 10 squared is equal to and then we would have 8 squared plus whatever this is. So we'll call that x squared. So this comes from the fact that we're solving for x. So x here would be equal to 10 squared minus 8 squared. And because we need to convert these into meters, oops, this is going to be the square root of that. Uh, because they're in meters, we end up with the 0.1 squared minus the 0.08 squared. So that's where this comes from. So just a little background in math there we end up with 1.5 newtons is the force between the two. So this is 1.5 for a force, and then here is 0.67. So um, at this point, we need to find out the magnitude of the force, so we want to know what is it uh, between the two, and we can use the Pythagorean theorem to find that out. So the overall force is equal to the square root of the force in the x squared plus the force in the y squared. So this is equal to the square root of 1.5 squared plus 0.67 squared. And when you do that, you should end up with a number very close to 1.6 newtons. We also need to know the direction. And remember the direction, really simple to do. We always say that is uh, the angle is equal to the inverse tangent of the sum of the y's, and so the sum of the y's would be the 0.67 over the sum of the x's, which is 1.5, and if you do that you should end up with about 24 degrees. So our final answer here is the, the uh, vector force is 1.6 newtons at 24 degrees above the positive x-axis. 
So if we wanted to see that, it would be about right here. This is 24 degrees, and it would be 1.6 newtons would be the force. So that is number 20. Uh, the very last one that we need to do is number 24. So for number 24, we've got a couple of styrofoam balls. They both have the same mass of 9 times 10 to the negative 8th kilograms and the same positive charge Q. And they're suspended from the same point by insulating threads so they don't have any charge. And the length here is 0.98 meters. The balls are separated by a distance of 0.02 meters. And the length here we said was equal to 0.98 meters. So uh, they want to know what is the charge on these. Okay, so let's go ahead and find the charge. First thing we probably need to do is let's figure out uh, kind of what's going on just in terms of one of the charges. So let's just do a free body diagram for this charge. And the free body diagram, I've got my charge Q on the right. Pointing straight down would be mg. Pointing up to the left would be my tension T. And then pointing to the right for this one would be the force, the electric force. Um, if we say that our axes are straight up and down and left and right, so we have plus y going this way and plus x going this way, we see that t is not in the right direction. We've got to get that t in the right direction. So let's give it a couple components. So here's one component in the y, one component in the x. And if we go back to our picture, we need to figure out what is the angle that is right here. So it would be the same as if I take, oops, I'm going to go back here. makes it hard to get a straight line here. Uh, they want the angle straight between the two. So we really need to look at the distance from here to here, which is only 0.01. Uh, and then the, the length of the triangle is 0.98. So we've got to find this other angle right here. Uh, and so to find that angle, let's go ahead and draw another triangle. So here's our triangle. We know that this is 0.01. We know this is 0.98, and so let's say that the angle here, the new angle that we've got, is equal to the inverse sine of 0.01 over 0.98. And if you plug that into your calculator, you'll find out that this angle right here is very small. It's only 0.585 degrees, so we're going to put in 0.585 degrees for that little angle. That makes this side t times the cosine of the angle, and this one t times the sine of the angle. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and take a look at all of the forces. And so we're going to look at the sum of the forces in the x direction. This is static, uh, so we know that that's equal to 0. And this one is the sum of the forces in the y direction is equal to 0. Uh, going to the right, we have the electric force, so the BFE. And we're going to subtract from it t times the sine of the angle. And that's equal to 0. So here Fe is equal to t times the sine of the angle. In the y direction, we have t times the cosine of the angle minus mg is equal to 0. So here we're going to say t times the cosine of the angle is equal to mg. Let's go ahead and solve this one for t. So t is equal to mg over the cosine of the angle. Let's go ahead and put both equations together. We're going to substitute in what we have for t into this equation. So I'm going to change colors. Uh, now we've got the electric force is equal to t, but now t is mg times the sine of the angle all over the cosine of the angle. And we remember sine over cosine is tangent. So here we've got Fe is equal to mg times the tangent of the angle. But we said the electric force, Fe, is actually equal to k times q squared, since both charges are the same. And let's go ahead and make that a big q, upper lowercase upper q, since that's what we have in the problem, all over. And then we have d. So we're going to put d here, and that's d squared. So let's plug that in for what we have for Fe. So this is kq squared all over d squared is equal to mg times the tangent of the angle. So let's solve this whole thing for q. So let's do it for q squared first. So q squared is equal to, uh, I'm going to have mg tangent of the angle on the top. 
times d squared all over k. And so if I want to know what q is all by itself, I'm going to get rid of the square, do the square root of both sides, and this is my equation. So now let's go ahead and plug some numbers in. The mass is really small, 9 times 10 to the negative 8 times gravity, which is 10, times the tangent of 0.585. We said that was really small. And then the distance between the two is 0 0.02 meters. And we have to square that. And we're going to divide that by 9 times 10 to the 9th, which is our value for k. And when we're done, we get a q value of 2.02 times 10 to the negative 11th coulombs, which uh, is also equal to 0 0.02 nanocoulombs, or 0 0.02 times 10 to the negative 9th. Uh, this answer would be acceptable, the times 10 to the negative 11th. Uh, nanocoulombs just makes it a little easier uh, in that we have been using nanocoulombs a lot in the problems. So that is the end of your problems for this section.